Hi, Savvy Sisters. Okay, today I'm the one you're interviewing <laughs> that I'm doing. And um, hopefully there will not be too much noise because we are kind of in a hotel. I'm taking my son to his school in Rochester. And we are here, but we're in a hotel. And I tried to find the most quiet place, but we'll see. Okay, I've got something very special for you today, all right? Um, I'm going to read a little bit first. It's not very long, but just a little, because I want to give you an idea. I'm reading this book, and it's going to be backwards when I show you. It's called The Second Book of the Tao. Now, the Tao was, my, my very first teacher was Wayne Dyer, Dr. Wayne Dyer. And I remember when he was reading the Tao, and he was reading one uh, excerpt a day, and then thinking about it, just thinking about it, and contemplating it. And he was being paid big bucks to do that, by the way. <laughs> well, I'm not being paid big bucks to do this, but I've read the Tao, and I'm gonna go back and read it again. That's not something you just read once. But the second book is, the Tao is written by Lao Tzu, all right? This one is the second book, and it is written by, um, the grandsons, the, con the contemporaries of the grandson of Latsu. So we're talking 300 and 100 BCE. And the name was Cheng Tzu um, and Cheng Yung, 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 Y U N G. All right? And they were the grandsons um, of Tsulu. <laughs> I can get caught up in all those names, but it kind of gives you the idea of how old these are. Um, they're funny. They are also extremely insightful, like the Tao. They're the masters. They're the masters. And the masters were the people. I'm going to read to you what a master really is. And I want you to also think about it, not as the Gandhis of the world, the Mother Teresas of the world, the uh, Martin Luther Kings of the world. I want, them to, I want you to think of you you. Now, here I go. Ready? The master doesn't aim for success, doesn't avoid failure, doesn't act with a motive, doesn't try to follow the Tao. She speaks when she is silent, says nothing when she speaks, and remains pure amid the world's dust and grime. The master soars past the sun and the moon, tucks the universe under her arm, and is the one with the 10,000 things. She lets the confused stay confused, I love that line, if that is what they want to be, and is always available to those with passion for truth. In the welter of opinions, she is, hi Sally, honey. In the welter of opinions, she is content with not knowing she makes distinctions, but doesn't take them seriously. She sees the world constantly breaking apart and stays, and this is important, and stays centered in the whole. She sees the world endlessly changing and never wants it to be different from what it is. This, hello, honey, and Onali Hill. I'm pronouncing that correctly, I hope. Hello, hello. So I'm reading from the second book of the Tao, and I read what the master is. Now notice the lines that say, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't aim for success, and she doesn't avoid failure, and she doesn't act with motive all the time, and she doesn't try to follow the Tao but she soars past the sun and the moon and she tucks the universe under her arm. This is an excellent book. I wanna take this apart. So many times you hear that we're the master of our fate, we're the master of, and, and the, um, oh, I'm trying to think of that poem in Victus. Um, we are the master of our fate and the captain of our soul. Okay, and that's a line in there. And we and, and self-help people are talking about that all the time, that we are the master of our decisions. We are the master of our choice. And it's true. But you know, in my life, there have been um, some very unique challenges that I had to get through. 
which taught me about how powerful perspective was to start. How powerful perspective was and that when one person wants your perspective to be this, you can change your perspective. You know, you, you are the one that forms your perspective and nobody has a perspective quite like you. And if you don't like what's going on, change your perception. And all of a sudden, everything starts to change with you. Why? Because you're in control. But this, hello, Sarah. But this is taking it just an, Morella, Morella. Did I, I think I just kind of took your name and squashed I didn't mean to do that. Morella. Well, I like it. <laughs> Welcome. All right. So what? What I'm really trying to say is that you get to the point when you keep studying, and that's what I did. I got through my challenges. I saw that I could change perception. I could keep the perception I wanted to keep, even though all those around me, she says I do too. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that others could have their perception and pull me in, try to pull me in. Circumstances would try to pull me in, but I didn't have to go there. I could have my own perception of where I wanted to be. And then I make my way. And before you know it, the whole world follows me. But then I kept studying more and more. And I started to learn that there is no reason to even get to the point where you feel like you have to choose. I got to a deep understanding that this world will come and it will go. Challenges will come into our life, but those are the contrasts. We just have to just, we have to choose how we want to get through them. It's not like there's any panic. There is a deep understanding. The more you study and the more you grow and the more I teach that Things are what they are, and everything will change. You don't have to get all upset. Now, sure, do I think if something is happening and you surely don't like it, do you stand for it? Yes. You say, no, I don't like that. I don't like that contrast. I don't like what you're presenting to me. I remember when I had $200 in my pocket, and, and I was... Um, uh, there was a homeless woman. Now, I, that was all I had to my name, okay? And, and there was a homeless woman, and I gave her $20. I told you this story, I think. And I um, thought to myself for a minute, oh my God, I'm only one step away. I'm one step away of being homeless. So this thought just ran into my mind. And then all of a sudden I said, no, this is not, that's not gonna happen. That is not the contrast I want to accept in my life. That's sorry, I get it, I get it, I see it. No, I don't want it. And then suddenly everything just changed. I didn't end up there. All of a sudden an apartment comes that was $5,000 for the first month and $5,000 for the last. I had $200. I said, let me fix up this place for you. He said, yes, I lived two months there free. <laughs> Do you see what happens? Everything changes when you change your perception of this life in general. And what this, this, this from the second book of the Tao says, it says that she doesn't avoid failure. Why doesn't she avoid failure? Because if you try to avoid failure, you don't live. You walk on your tippy toes. And there's no reason to walk on your tippy toes because you don't have to worry about failure. You, yes, I did say that. You don't need to worry about failure because as soon as you fail, you're on top of the world again. It is a very weird perception, but it's the most truest perception you would ever have in your life. You can change it. You don't even have to worry. You can change it with an understanding and there's no angst. There is no angst. There's no upsetment, upsetment, upsetting in your stomach. You don't get that, that, um, um, I've got a bug on my book. 
and he's okay, except he's gonna crawl up my arm and I don't want him to. <laughs> I don't know where he came from. So, but you don't have that anxiety in your stomach. You don't get that tightness because you just know that everything has its time and understanding that things are thrown into your life so that you can learn and experience. We're really here to learn and experience. And failure is part of the experience, but so is success. So you see the contrast, but you don't have to live in the contrast. Do you see? And it is an interesting perception, but is one that serves you so incredibly well. Like she says, she doesn't, she doesn't act with a motive. She comes with love, happiness. And she doesn't try to follow the Tao. The Tao is God, by the way. But she, is, she knows he's there in everything. She speaks when she is silent because she has this statement about her. And she says nothing when she speaks. And when she stays pure, it means she doesn't, it's not that, I'm so glad. Yes, you don't avoid failure, Sally, you don't. Oh, yes, you can, but it's going to be backwards. I'll show you the cover of the book. Yes. The second book of the Tao. T-A-U. See, it's backwards for you. And this one is one of um, uh, David, um, oh gosh, Mr. Mr. Dyer, Dr. Dyer. He said that this guy was really, really, really good. And this is Stephen Mitchell. All right. And he wrote the first, he, he transcribed the first book. And so I got the second book with his same kind, the same man, because he's very good at transcribing and he's humorous. You'll like it. But this thing where staying pure, what does that mean? Do we all have to be nuns? No, that's not what it means at all. Staying pure means get not letting your mind get confused with all the, the, the criticalness of, of, I can't do that because I might fail, or I can't do that because the world is just in a terrible place, or I can't, I, I can't deal with this. Letting all the, the pollutants, the dirt and the grime of the world, as is said in this, 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 this uh, little insert, the dirt and the grime into your mind understanding that there is something so much bigger and that you're here to experience and that you are truly not just the master of your life you are the master all creation comes through you everything is made through you and when you understand that and you study on it all of a sudden you don't fear the things you used to fear you know some people have a fear of success don't fear success because it'll come and it'll go nothing is supposed to stay because we are here to experience not just achieve we are here to create an experience to taste the fruit of everything in life and nothing really stays. Write the name of the author as well as the title, please. I definitely will. Guys, you can get the Tao. Um, it's spelled T-A-U. You can get that first book, too. That is fantastic. Hi, Kristen. But you can also get this second book. This is pretty impressive. Um, I will. It's just the second book of the Tao. T-A-U. That's the, the title. And it's by Stephen with a PH Mitchell. And we'll put it, I'll put it in the comments for you. Reading one of these, one of these, see they come like this, you know, just a little. They're all about being present. They're all about loving where you are. I'm going to read the last paragraph for you because a lot of you weren't on. And you really should hear this. The master soars past the sun and the moon. She doesn't, she doesn't sit idly in her sofa and just be pure and not worry about life. No, she soars. She soars past the sun and the moon, tucks the universe under her arm, and, and is one with 10,000 things. That means she's one with all of the universe. Which would you recommend the most, the first or the second book? Okay, I will write all this down. You can write either one. 
If you start with this one, you go back to the other one. Listen to the words right now. But I'm so glad you're, you're really interested in this. But right now, we're soaring, guys. Listen to this. <laughs> she lets the confused stay confused. La la, guys. Listen to that. She lets the confused stay confused if that is what they want and is always available to those with passion for the truth. We're all heal we're all healers. And how many times I remember Bob Proctor telling me, he said, Elena, you cannot help everyone needs this, but you want to serve the ones who want it. That's what this is saying. If they want to stay confused, and a lot of people do, oh gosh, do they want to stay confused? I what did I just hear? And I know it's true. It's true, but I had never heard it before. And they said, they said that the, um, there's an addiction to anger, that you can get addicted to anger just like you can get addicted to food or drugs or alcohol. That's amazing. And, and when people get into that anger, they're not looking for the truth. They're looking for the anger. And it's a vicious cycle. Now, if you're hanging around a person and you want to help them, but you can only help them if they say, I want to end this anger. You can't help them if they're happy in that. So if they're happy in that, that's where they're at right now. That's their journey. That's their perception that they want. But you want to help those that have a passion for the truth who say, I don't want this anger anymore. I want to learn. That's when you want to take them on. In the welter of opinions, she is content with not knowing. <laughs> Isn't that perfect for right now? She makes dis dis distinctions, but she doesn't take them seriously. She sees the world constantly breaking apart and stays centered in the whole. Truth will set us free, Sarah. But she doesn't let everything tear her apart. It is... Oh, I'm very happy, Morelia. <laughs> oh, God, I love your name. Someday I will figure out how to say it. You have a great day, darling. This is when you get to the point where you are starting to understand this. The peace. Hello, Carolyn. Hello, honey. I'm so glad you're watching. Oh, my gosh, you are up at this late hour in Australia. Welcome, welcome, welcome. When you are, when you are really at a state where you understand this and you grow with this, and this is what I'm having, this is what I'm doing in Savvy Sisterhood too. So those of you who are in it, you'll start to understand this more and more because as I give you the tools to correct the, cri the critical mind, start living from our soul, start living with these deep understandings, in our business, in our life, in our romance, in our relationships, then all of a sudden you have tremendous amounts of energy, but you have a calm core. And it is the most phenomenal feeling because you don't worry. It's a surrender of all the worry because there's a deep understanding. It's not a surrender of worry because of faith, although that's nice too. It's a surrender because of understanding. And all of a sudden, there's a calmness that settles in you, but an excitement to experience and build because you have no fear of failure. You don't worry about success. You know it's coming. You know you're going to experience it all. You're going to just do your best and you're going to make life the way you want it to be. That's what I teach in Savvy Sisterhood too. <laughs> and that's what I'm helping you to realize every day with our quotes. But Savvy Sisterhood too. we'll talk about this in the lesson. Okay, guys, we'll talk a little bit deeper about this because this is important. Anyway, today I've got a challenge for you. I've got a challenge. I want you to really start looking in your life at how you can be a master. And do this for me. Just take 15 minutes 
and go into a little meditation and ask three questions. Am I here? I know that sounds silly, but am I here? That alerts the spirit in you. Number two, ask, ask, um, what is my, what is the, what, what is it that I want so much in my soul? And it'll answer. And it may just be happiness, love, and, and total fun and joy. And if that's what it is, start living that way. Be the happy person you're meant to be. And then keep studying like we do in Savvy Sisterhood too, and gain that calmness. And I'll tell you what, success comes because you're leading from truth. And failure comes too, but you get out. Why? Because it's a contrast you don't want. You see it, you experience it, you understand it. That deep truth, it doesn't stay. So today, start asking yourself, what is it you're really here? And start really, yeah, start living by why you're really here. Why you're really here. All right, we'll read more about this. And in Savvy Sisterhood 2, we move that to Thursday at noon for everybody. Carolyn, see if you can join Savvy Sisterhood 2 of 2. Oh, no, that's in your middle of the night. Oh, we're going to get something for you. And of course, there's always, um, I send it in your email, but still I want you to be able to participate. But anybody who um, can do uh, Eastern time at 12 noon on Thursday, we're going to be having Savvy Sisterhood too. And we're going to go into depth on this. Okay. And so if you want to join, go to joinsavvysisterhood.com again, squish that in the URL, and this time press level two. All right, until that time, start asking myself, oh, we can find a time. Yes, we can, Carolyn. <laughs> I love you. Really, guys, start thinking, why am I so worried? I am the true master. I do create. I do experience. I'm here to experience. Why in the name of heaven do I worry? This is not worth worrying about. Okay, start to release it. I love you all. Have a fabulous day. I'm glad you're all on. Hey, if you found this valuable, will you uh, type in valuable and down there? Say valuable. And sh you can't share this because we're in Savvy Sisterhood. So if you just type valuable, I'm really, really happy. And then I'll know that I'm giving you the value you want. All right? So please type value. Let me know. Become the master today. Join Savvy Sisterhood too. Wow, am I demanding. <laughs> I love you all. Namaste. Become the master. Gain the calm and the happiness. You deserve it. Bye.